I am excited to announce that early next year, we're launching hand tracking on Quest. No controllers, no buttons, no straps, no external sensors, uh, just full range of motion in your hands. And you know, even if you've spent a lot of time in VR and you've spent a lot of time with touch controllers, uh, I think that the first time that you get a chance to experience this and you just wiggle your fingers and you, you see that, that full range of motion in your hands, it's, it takes the experience to a whole new level. Our hand tracking team has developed state-of-the-art methods of applying deep learning to understand the location and pose of your hands using just the onboard Quest cameras. No need for additional cameras, active depth sensors, or extra processors. Instead, we use model-based tracking and deep neural networks to accurately infer where your hands are and what they're doing, including exactly what your fingers are doing. And then we reconstruct those poses nearly instantly into VR. We're doing all of this in a mobile processor without compromising CPU or GPU. And we're also using our inclusive AI frameworks to test hand tracking for a wide range of people and environments. Early next year, we'll release a beta for Quest users, and we'll ship an SDK so that you can start unlocking these new interaction mechanics in your apps. Where we've made a major software update, uh, and we have a new product that we're calling Oculus Link that is going to make it so that if you have a gaming PC and a USB-C cable, you're now going to be able to run all the Rift content on your Quest. So this means that starting in November, when we ship this update, your quest is basically a riff now, too. <laughs> so, now, this is going to work with, with most USB-C cables that are out there. Uh, so you, know, you don't have to buy ours. Uh, but you're, so you're going to want to check this out. We're, we're shipping it in, in November, and, and we're really excited to get this out there. I'm excited to share that an upgraded version of Passthrough Pass-Through Plus will be available for Quest users starting next week. <laughs> Pass-Through Plus gives you a comfortable, stereo-correct view of your surroundings while you're wearing the headset, and it's useful for any time you step outside your play space. To make this possible on Quest, we've applied techniques from high-performance image processing, and advanced 3D computation, resulting in a similar visual quality to what you'll see on Rift S. And what's even better, with Pass-Through On Demand shipping later this year, you can pull up Pass-Through Plus at any time. So the next time you hear your friend trying to steal your pizza off the kitchen counter, turn on Pass-Through Plus to catch him in the act. Then get back to slicing pineapples in Fruit Ninja. So starting later this year, we will begin to roll out a completely new social layer across the Oculus platform powered by Facebook. You'll see some changes in how social features work on the platform. You'll log in with your Facebook account to use the social features Facebook is known for while using your Oculus identity. This is going to enable a lot of new ways to connect on the, Facebook, on the Oculus platform. We're adding chats so you can message your Oculus friends in or out of the headset. And we're adding events, so you can organize a tournament to play Racket NX with your friends. And we're adding the ability to post to Facebook from VR, so you can share your favorite moments with your VR communities and groups. Over time, we plan to power more and more of our social infrastructure with Facebook to realize our vision of a socially connected VR ecosystem. For the people who choose to log in with Facebook, we'll continue to add new ways to find and meet people so it's as easy to connect with others as it is in the, in the physical world. Today, uh, we want to announce an experience that we've been working on called Horizon. And in Horizon, uh, you are going to be able to build your own worlds and experiences uh, you're going to be able to play games, you're going to be able to explore, you're going to be able to uh, hang out with your friends and, of course, meet new people. And uh, because everyone is going to be able to create uh, their own spaces and experiences within it, Horizon is going to have this property where 
it just grows and expands and gets better and better over time as we focus on building this out um, for many years to come. It's the start of an entirely new social VR world for Oculus Quest and Rift. With Horizon, we're learning from our experience building Facebook spaces, Oculus rooms, and venues. But our vision is bigger, a place where people can explore, play, create, and connect with others in a vast, thriving virtual world where anything is possible. We are launching this next year. Uh, we're putting the finishing touches on it now, and, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you all do with it. So later this year, we're making some major updates to Oculus TV on Oculus Quest and Go. The updated Oculus TV will be the go-to hub for all media on the platform. So there will be one place to discover content of all kinds, from your favorite media apps like Fandango Now to Prime Video VR, as well as immersive experiences like the Emmy-nominated Traveling Wall Black and 360 videos from top creators. And of course, it will be easier than ever to hang out with friends, kick back, and watch things together. Today, we're introducing Media Studio, a VR media management tool where you can upload and publish your immersive and VR native media content. Media Studio, yeah, it's a great way to get your immersive content on the platform. It's a place where you can manage your immersive asset library and get performance analytics about your content. Because hand tracking is great. It doesn't require controllers, but it, but it still requires you to use your hands. Um, and in the future, we want to get to an input uh, where we can just think something and it, and it happens. So what, what, what people call a, a neural interface. And um, you know, earlier this week, we announced that the Control Labs team uh, will be joining us. And you know, they're the leading team working on neural interfaces. They have a lot of the best researchers, uh, computational neuroscientists, and more. And you know, they're working on a wristband. Right, and it, and it picks up electrical impulses that are sent through your nervous system and turns them into digital signals that you can use to, as input um, in virtual and augmented reality. And it's, it's completely non-invasive. Right? So there's no surgery, no implants. You don't have to get holes drilled in your head. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a wristband. And um, so it gives you the sensation of being able to interact uh, with digital objects just by thinking. And you know, this is clearly early, right? It's gonna, it's gonna be a number of years before this gets into any of the products that we're shipping, uh, but it works. And you know, they have a, a dev kit uh, that they're shipping already now. Um, and now that the Control Labs team is going to be joining our Facebook Reality Labs team that works on, on augmented and virtual reality, um, we're gonna invest and make sure that this is a foundational part of the input for the next computing platform. And I'm, I'm really excited about this one, so I, I just wanted to talk about it for, for a few minutes today. Computer vision, a part of what we call machine perception, is another essential element of the VR experience. For starters, the ability to localize the headset in the real world with great reliability and accuracy so that virtual objects are rock solid is what makes the virtual world seem real. That's not all, though. The ability to detect and reconstruct the real world and import parts of it as desired enables mixed reality. That is, mixing and matching of real and virtual in VR, so that you could, for example, bring a real keyboard, mouse, and desk into your virtual workspace and use them as easily as you would in the real world. <laughs> Reconstruction also enables social teleportation, which lets you share your surroundings with another person or jump into someone else's part of the world, as we saw in Boz's talk. And of course, it's the foundation of live maps. Let's look at some of the recent progress from our Surreal team on reconstruction. I want to emphasize that what you're seeing is the real thing with no smoke and mirrors. This is a fly through of reconstruction, state of the art reconstruction technology. I think this is absolutely amazing. If you can imagine stepping into one of those and just being in it, 
This phenomenal level of reconstruction will enable extraordinarily high quality mixed reality experiences. As you watch the next video, you can see Yasser and Danny wearing headsets in the real world video in the corners. The faces in the center are avatars. And again, they're animated in real time entirely from cameras in the headset. Well, um, what can your face do? Can you show us? Well, I've always hoped you would ask me that question. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I have some pretty good, I think, mouth movement. Mm. How about your eyes? Can you, can you look left, right, up, down? Mm -hmm. um, good, good, good. Yeah, I'm going to be surprised. Ah, ooh. Mm. I, like my, I think one of my favorites is puffing my cheeks. Mm. The mouthwash, mouthwash commercial. Mm -hmm. And rolling my tongue. Mm. Mm, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah. Good, good, good. Pretty hard to believe that those aren't videos, huh? Although, to be fair, it, right now, it doesn't always work that well. Anyway, it certainly doesn't take a huge leap to imagine how doing that in VR could be far more satisfying and personal than seeing someone's image on a flat screen. Social teleportation will need more than just heads, though. So I'd like to share an initial step toward codec avatar bodies with you. A codec avatar is a digital representation of a person. And so we build these to look like us, move like us, sound like us. And uh, the purpose of it is to be able to connect people across distances. Again, this is just a first step. What you saw was generated offline, not in real time, although it will become real time in the not too distant future. 